to blame. I don't know how to, to proper plan. It's terrible. Oh, honey. Oh my God, it's actually quite hot. Anyway. <laughs> Hi guys. I just, I really like it. I really like it. Anyway, let's put, put the fan down now. This is, um, I'm rambling. Let's say hello first. Let's say hello first. Hello and welcome back to another video that you probably didn't search for. My name's Keely, as always. I'm not changing my name anytime soon, unless it's my last name. David, hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm joking. Um, anyway, um, today, if you can't tell by this lovely fan that is keeping me lovely and cool because it's actually warm in the UK, I cannot believe that the sun has finally arrived with proper heat because 20 degrees isn't the heat, it needs to be like 24, 25 upwards for me to, to feel warm. The realisation of no carnival or no pride this year. Great. This is a pride fan from, I think pride either last year or the year before. I can't remember if we made it last year, I think we might have missed last year because I was working. So maybe the year before. Um, because uh, I, then I say we, I mean me and my kids, because I take my kids to, to Pride, because uh, like I said in the first video, I am part of the LGBT community, um, and we go, I think we've been going since they've been very small, um, and we go every year pretty much. There's been a few years I've gone without them, and that means I stay out until the evening, but usually we go to the parade in the daytime, we stay from beginning to end, um, and then because it's, uh, they're quite young, we go home. But this year, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, there is no pride. But you know what? It doesn't mean we can't celebrate pride within our homes, within ourselves, online with our friends. So today's video, I thought I would talk about um, what it means to be part of the LGBT community um, as someone who identifies as being bisexual or pansexual, because to be fair, it's a lot of confusion. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, if you didn't know I was bisexual, surprise! Um, I, I think I'm pretty out to be fair, um, and if you haven't, then hi, I'm a bisexual person. That shouldn't have to announce my sexuality because it should be a normal thing that people shouldn't have to announce, but there you go. Uh, where I, I, I think uh, between the bisexualness and the bisexualness and the pansexualness, um, between the two words, so I came out when I was around 14, um, to friends, I didn't really come out further than that circle and obviously social media wasn't a thing when I was 14 because I'm getting older um, but uh, yeah so I came out around 14 and um, I came out as bisexual, pansexual wasn't really a term I had heard of it was just lesbian, gay, bisexual and to be fair at 14 I don't think I knew what transsexual was so those, though it was like LGB, I didn't really know about the T um, when I was 14, <laughs> the T, sorry, bad times, anyway so, I didn't really know about the, the um, pansexual side, so uh, as a bisexual person I just said I fall in love or I'm attracted to anyone, okay? So that means, in my eyes, in common day knowledge, it means cis men, cis women, transgender men, transgender women. To be fair, if you're transgender and you identify as a woman, then you are a woman to me anyway. Um, Non-binary, anything in between, basically I'm attracted to this, your heart, and the person, your personality, um, and your features, so that, that's that's how I identify myself. Now, on forms, I don't see pansexual a lot anyway, and I because I've been identifying as bisexual for so long, I still use that term, I still have bi pride, but I think I would fall into the pansexual category. So yeah, so that's that cleared up, I hope. Is it cleared up? I don't know. Um, but this video, because it is Pride Month, and I know that I haven't really put any videos out about Pride Month and I was going to do this before but I really wanted to get the balcony done and out there um, for anyone that may be wanting ideas for transforming their balcony and I knew we would have at least one more week of Pride Month for me to cover this topic um, and obviously Black Lives Matter has really taken a front, a forefront of this month so which I'm happy for um, which I, I don't mind covering that as the, the first video in June I think can't remember the time's going so fast um so yeah so i wanted to do a video about pride um now uh there's a few things i want to cover bear with me um one of them is the spectrum and how it works so for me um 
the spectrum is so wide from like that's why I say LGBTQIA+, because it is encompassing all sexualities really and all gender identifications to me um, and that's what I think the spectrum is and for me you're a person and I judge you on your personality and the actions you do not who you are attracted to um, and I really wish the rest of the world could be like that. Saying that there are a, there is a long long way to go um, obviously in this country in the UK we are mostly accepting of LGBT QIA plus um, people. However, recently I know there's been things with tran transgender and um, I'm hoping that we could just push past it because transgender people um, are people and they shouldn't be treated any differently under any laws or any un under any rules or policies or anything like that. Um, so yeah, just equality for all and I think we've got a very long way to go and that is why Pride is still very much important. Yes, we have Pride for who we are but Pride is still a protest and there is still a long way to go so as long as we have problems, Pride will exist and we do not need a straight Pride because as far as I can see, straight people, cisgendered people don't really have as much as of discrimination against you and xenophobia against you um, as people on the rainbow spectrum do. So yeah, there will, there will always be a need, or at least for now, there will always be a need for pride. So pride is very, very important. Um, we actually do have a massive rainbow flag in our living room. So anyone who comes into my home knows that we are a queer family. And um, also the fact that my children are educated means that I'm hoping if they were to come out as um, anything other than cisgendered or um, straight, then they know that they have a supporting, loving home um, and they will be supported as people. Um, and that anyone they bring home, as long as they're not horrible people, will be welcomed in my home. Um, it's also in a place where you can see, so our balconies, if you watch the balcony video, the balcony doors wide, open wide up and all our neighbors can see the flag as well. Um, not only that, I'm quite open on social media um, on forms I sign, it's, it's always there, like I said earlier. I make it very apparent in my home that the um, family and the children should feel welcome and, and at ease and anyone that's around us should feel that as well. I want to speak about LGBT and being LGBT in other places as well. So I'm from Caribbean descent as well. Actually, I'm from, I'm from everywhere, but because I was adopted, into family. I grew up in a, a Grenadian household from the Caribbean, um, even though my heritage is Antiguan and Nigerian and English. It's what I identify in because of where I grew up is Grenadian. Um, and I went there for the first time, even though I wanted to go for years, but it's expensive, Virgin and other places that do hold to the Caribbean. Um, I went there for the first time two years ago. Um, I was staying with a very conservative um, family member and uh, they, religion is a very big thing over there, um, especially Christianity, and obviously we, we know majority of how Christianity and LGBT work, the partnership isn't very smooth sailing. There are some smooth sailing things out there, but um, in this country in particular it is illegal to um, do acts, because I'm not going to say commit because it's not crime, but do acts of same sex um, things. Um, and you can, it's punishable up to 10 years in prison. So um, it is a country where you're very aware of that. And I was in a setting where the conversation came up because uh, there was something on the TV, it was a very uh, biblical television uh, channel and they started to discuss it and then the people in the room started to discuss it and I felt so uneasy and so angry um, that I actually left the room and I just went outside for the next hour. I don't know if they knew it by then, I kind of made the excuse that I was tired or I needed air because it it's a hot country um, and I wanted to go outside for some air but I felt so uncomfortable and I wanted to speak up but there was so many factors that I'm in someone else's home, I'm in someone else's country, all the people that I'm speaking out are p p family members and I, I love them um, and there's the fact that it's against the law as well so there's lots of things to take into account and I really wish that we could speak up every time but sometimes Unfortunately, I had to kind of pick where I was, especially as it, we still had quite a while of our stay in this place. So 
um, I did that, but the next morning um, I did let my mum know and I was like, I really felt uncomfortable because of what they're speaking about. Um, so yeah, there was that. <laughs> speaking about my mum. I'm sorry mum if you ever see this, but um, so I came out to my mum as a uh, gay um, in 2013, no, 2000, 2011, um, because there was a point in my life where I, I thought I was a lesbian lady. Um, I don't know why I said lesbian lady, but I, I identified as being lesbian and I identified as a lesbian for three years. So um, that's why I say it's a spectrum because I clearly went from growing up as a small child thinking that I was attracted to only boys um, to when I was a teenager and discovering that I was attracted to girls as well and then I was like okay maybe it's both and then um, early adulthood which is early 20s then going actually maybe it's just women um, and I identified as gay for three years um, and then after I, I found myself attracted to a, a person that identified as a man as a cisgendered man and I was like okay maybe I'm bisexual <laughs> um, so that's why I'm like it's a spectrum and I think I'm just a fluid person um, but yeah so I was out as gay and I told my mum and um, when I started dating a man it, I guess it became quite confusing because she was like well what does that mean then because he came out as gay so I tried to explain that I, I guess I'm, I'm not gay but I am still attracted to women um, I've been in a cisgendered relationship just cisgendered it's not cisgendered I, it's a male female relationship um, with a cisgendered male for four years now and I believe that this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with but it doesn't mean I'm not bisexual anymore it doesn't go away it's just that I'm in a relationship with someone that happens not to be gay or um, who doesn't identify that way um, but it doesn't expel anything that I feel or the way that I am built from the inside I still identify as bisexual and I probably always will be because it's not going to go away um, and I don't want it to go away. I am a proud bisexual woman. So yeah, so that, that's my experience with with that there. I think I want to quickly touch on, I have touched on transgender, but black black transgender ladies. Um, I don't know if the black transgender men are getting as much hate, but recently, obviously, with the Black Lives um, Matter movement, we have um, seen, or at least it's coming more to light, that there is more violence against women that are black and transgendered. There is um, more discrimination against them within their employment and things like that. So I don't know why there is more hate towards them. I don't know if it's a combination of being black and transgendered, but we need to remember to love everybody for the person that they are. Um, they really aren't any different than you and I. We all bleed the same. It's just the same as race really. With, that someone isn't different because their genetic makeup and being transgender does not make you different. It just makes just makes it harder actually for you to go in life because you're born into a body that you didn't you don't you're not identifying with. So yeah, that that's my take on that. I haven't really done much research into it. Um so I haven't got much more to say but I do think it's very important to highlight that and for you to, to look into it as well. I'm gonna look more into it. Um, but we need to support our brothers and sisters and non-binary um, friends and family and strangers really and make sure everyone is feeling loved and welcomed in this world. Um, lastly, I want to quickly take it on a light, it's not a light note, but it's a lighter note. Um, I'm going to try and put pictures up if I can find them because I'm not on social media so it means I need to log on on the web and kind of find them, download them and put them into this video with uh, editing on an iPhone still. So. Um, we'll see if I can do it, but if we are, I'm going to move to the side just in case I do put the video uh, the pictures in because then I can put a nice big picture just here. Don't know what that accent was, but yeah, so I can put a nice big picture just here. So, uh, when I came out as um, a lesbian, there was something in me that was like, I need to be visible because obviously you do not know walking down the street um, if someone's gay or not, unless they obviously have it on show that they're gay. Um, and I was really worried because I had children as well that I wouldn't be seen as a gay woman um, or someone that likes women. Um, so it was like a hyper, a hyper uh, awareness that I put into myself. That makes no sense. But what I mean is 
um, I found myself dressing in a more actually dressing like I did before I became a mum to be fair because I was very tomboy growing up so um, I found myself gearing more towards that way and I, I adapted um, a dress sense that was described as STEM um, which is a kind of masculine kind of feminine um, so it was in between because I still wore makeup and stuff but I, my clothing was more towards the masculine side and to be fair I still I still like what that is I just I'm not as hyped up I don't like the word hyped up but I'm not um, I'm not as conscious of what I'm wearing so I just wearing what's comfortable rather than making an effort to wear something that will make me seen as someone that likes women um, and I guess for some people it might been it might have been strange when I stopped dressing like that because it may have felt like it was all a phase when it wasn't and I want to get that out there it was not a phase I generally was attracted to only women at that time um, and I guess I wanted to show that through the way I was dressing so there's that so if I find some pictures I will put them here um, the last thing I want to address is um, how scary it is and by invisibility so in terms of being a gay woman in my family or being a bisexual woman now but when particularly when I was being a gay woman I did have um, a family member threatened to, to hurt me and my partner at that time who was also a female um, and things like that made me weary of being around members or being openly out in front of members of my family um, even on social media I was waving my flag um, nice and, and proud oh this is actually quite nice oh lovely um, yes yeah, so I was um, waving it out nice and I'm going to stop that because the noise is going to be really annoying for you guys Anyway, I was ra waving my flag nice and, and, and proud uh, and high for you guys to see. Um, but obviously with family things, I wasn't like, hey, I'm here, I'm queer, get used to it. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, that, that was that. And I still, I'm very conscious of what I put out, but I think as I'm getting older, I'm kind of having this, uh, I don't give a fuck kind of um, attitude towards life. It's, it's slowly getting there and I think it, it will get there but it's um because of my anxiety I'm, I'm still quite aware and, and because of my anxiety I am very uh, analytical of what I do and how I present myself and what I say and things like that so um yeah there's a bit of a filter at the moment it's not a major filter clearly I'm still dressing alternative I'm still talking about these issues but there is a bit of a filter at least with family members because I'm afraid of the consequences of saying how I feel and being who I am um, so there's that that happens and the last thing I want to uh, address is by visibility oh my god that took me ages <laughs> I was going to talk about by vis visibility okay so um, being a bisexual person and uh, being in the LGBTQIA plus community, um, by visibility is actually a real thing and um, I'm hoping it's getting better because um, I haven't actually interacted with many people, to be fair, it's a lockdown, um, but I haven't interacted with many people online as well because I'm off social media. Um, but in general, clubs and things like that, I haven't been to for a very long time. So I don't know how it is now, but at least before, um, it feels like people would say, hey, you're a bi, it's a gateway, it's a kind of gateway identification to either being straight or being gay, um, which is something that I actually thought when I came out as gay um, years ago, I was like, okay, well, maybe that was a gateway to me becoming gay, but actually it's not. Um, because like I said, gender and sexuality is fluid. Um, however, yeah, so there is a problem with that within the community itself, or there was at least before when I was younger, um, and that being bisexual is something that is raised, um, and people see you as either not gay or either not straight, and you kind of seen as um, either doing it for trendy or you like to get with multiple people, or um, you're greedy. There's so many negative things about it and it's not true because I'm clearly I've never been 
in a polyamorous relationship, although some people may like that and that's up to them. However, it's not for me and because I'm bisexual, it doesn't mean that's what I like. Because you're bisexual, it doesn't mean that you will eventually come out as gay or you eventually come out as straight. It is what it is, it is how you feel. Bisexual men are not on the way to being gay. They are bisexual men. Um, bisexual women are not experimenting, they are bisexual women. And I guess I wanted to, to put that in there. So let's finish on a positive. Um, guys, I've got to say, I am trying to be very, very aware of how I speak, not because of offending people, because I've realized watching back some of my videos, how fast I actually talk. So I'm trying to slow it down, but it just means that I'm losing my train of thought because I'm not getting it all out in one, if that makes sense. So I do apologize if this video is lagging. Um, I also feel quite tired today as well. I don't know why I got up really late as well. I got up at like 11 um, and that's late for me. Some of you may be like, 11, that's early. No, it's late for me, I have children. The other partner was up um, to help me with the schoolwork, but I'm just like, I'm feeling very, very tired. I don't know what it is. Um, not to mention that I've still got this damn sty on my eye which is so frustrating, but I really should go to the doctors, but I don't want to, because obviously there's a big pandemic at the moment. Not only are they dealing with lots of things and other massive problems that people have, um, but the anxiety around going to see a doctor. So um, yeah, so no mascara for me, which means no actual makeup apart from my eyebrows. Anyway, I divulge, um, I digress even. I. Yeah, I've already been to sleep, I can't have a nap. <sighs> Maybe it's um, feeling hot as well. Anyway, I wanted to end this on a positive note. So, um, what I want to say to you guys is, um, please be kind to each other. Um, be understanding as well. You don't know what someone's been through, regardless of we're talking about um, uh, LGBTQIA plus issues. Um, race issues, disability issues, or non-able-bodied issues. I don't know how to to word that because obviously I'm not a person that's in that position. Um, but they're not disabled because they're still able to do something. I don't really like the term disabled. It's just different, differently abled. That is lovely. I like that. Um, yeah. So whether you're dealing with differently abled things or sicknesses or um, anxiety or depression whatever it is you don't know what someone's been through that day so please be kind to each other be kind to people you meet um, please try not to judge a book by its cover um, because we all need we all need support and we all need love in this world um, not only that if you are someone that's quite young and you are battling with how you're feeling please do not be afraid to talk to someone whether that be online to find um, support sites or to talk to places like Childline or Samaritans depending on your age um, and just feel supported or to try and confine them in a friend if you can. Um, it's good to get these things out and not bottle them in. If you are in a really bad place because of anything that you identify with, um, just know that you're not alone and that your life is worthy as well. Um, so just remember that. Um, which is rich coming from someone who tried to commit suicide years ago. Anyway, um, but yeah, it, it is, is um, worthy. So um, we'll talk about that in another video. Um, but yeah, so it's worthy and uh, you are loved. You are loved by someone. Um, you are loved by a community that welcomes you with open arms. Um, so yeah, guys, that's it really. I feel really, I sound really meh. Um, it's not because I'm sad, I'm not sad, I'm just really, really tired and I don't understand why because I haven't worked for <laughs> over 12 weeks and um, my kids are pretty independent so I have no idea why I'm feeling really tired. Maybe I'm coming down with something, I don't know. Um, so yeah. Guys, I want you to love and be loved. Um, take care of yourselves. And it's coming. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's not my hand. <laughs> That's super fruit. Oh, guys, those guys are amazing. Anyway, goodbye. I'll see you soon.